In this module, we are going to discuss our checklist good audit documentation. And as always, we want to be efficient and effective, follow professional standards, and document what we have done properly. Now, it'd be really nice if checklists were good documentation, because they sure can help us be efficient and effective. But there are lots of opinions. Some people are of the opinion that a memo is required. Some people are of the opinion that checklists are no good. Opinions don't matter. What matters is what do standards say. So do standards say checklists are OK? Do standards ever say you must write a memo? Now, if someone says to you, wouldn't you agree with me that checklists are insufficient documentation? I have a standard answer to that kind of question, which is no. Um, I just, it's a trick question, and they're trying to get you to agree with them by saying, wouldn't you agree with me? But in particular, um, in the context of checklists are insufficient audit documentation, I would say no, and my reason for saying no is standards say so. Of course they're good uh, documentation, and standards say that a number of times. Now, are checklists okay for everything? Could you do an entire audit only with a well-designed checklist? And I think the answer to that is, of course not. There are some things that are beyond a checklist. But if what you're doing is trying to find a way to prompt yourself, standards say the auditor shall do a bunch of things, would it be a nice idea to prompt yourself to make sure that somehow or other you have done that? Um, I'd like to be prompted to be sure that the rep letter includes a certain thing that's required by standards. Now, is that a good idea for a checklist? Sure it is. Um, and it's a particularly good idea because the documentation is in the rep letter. So your checklist would say, be sure to ask management this question and include their response in the rep letter. Tick. And the documentation is in the rep letter. Now, if you're going to tick off that box, really good idea to make sure it's in the rep letter, but we're prompting ourselves and presumably we're going to do that. Now the other thing is sometimes standards say consider. The auditor shall consider. Well, consideration is a mental process. Some people say, well, I want to write a memo about that. I want to write a memo about how I furrowed my brow, thought carefully, used my knowledge of the client, used my understanding of controls, discussed with some other person. That's fine. Um, if you wish to do that, you may. I'm not going to tell you not to. But I would also say, if the standards say consider, and you have a checklist step and say, I considered, and you initial it and date it, I think you satisfactorily documented it. Now, something like an inventory count. And an inventory count, every client's inventory count is going to be very different. The people you talk to, the locations, the stuff that you're counting, you're probably going to want to have details of all of that, particularly to guide the folks next year. Um, Maybe a checklist can provide you with prompts. Be sure to document one, two, three, four, five. But probably you're going to be writing a memo about your inventory count. So can we expect an inventory count to be documented solely by a checklist? Probably not. Now, do professional standards ever say you must write a memorandum? And the word memorandum is mentioned in six sections in the context of you may need a, rec a memorandum. And it's mentioned nine times within those six sections. So where does it say we might need a memorandum? Now, in Statement of Quality Management to Audit Quality Review, there are around 20 individual activities that are required for each um, engagement being reviewed. I personally think I would like a checklist. 
so that I can make sure that I do all of those 20 individual activities prompt me to do them. If I'm trying to remember off the top of my head and write a memo and include all the activities that I did, I suspect I'm going to miss one, so I really don't want to do that. The other thing is if the audit you're reviewing is okay, I would assume at the bottom you would say if you have reviewed this engagement and it's okay, I think you can probably just tick off a box on the checklist, it's okay. If it's not okay, I can't imagine a checklist being detailed enough for you to describe what's not okay, what needs to be done, what the solution is. And so SQM2 uh, A53 says you may need a memo, and I couldn't agree more. You might. Um, you also might not. But it certainly doesn't say you have to write a memo. It says you may need a memo. 230A11 on documentation. It says you may need a completion memo. Now, if you're finishing the audit and you're finishing up your documentation and you've got problems, certainly you're going to need to write a memo because there's no way a checklist could do it. But if you're finishing things up and everything has worked just fine, there are no issues, you can probably tick off a checklist box, say, I completed the audit documentation and there were no issues, initial date. 300 in planning, A13 and 19. Now, what this section is doing, actually in three places, is trying to give you some hints for how a brief memo may be fine documentation and may be a simple and efficient way of doing things. So they're not telling you you have to write a memo. They're saying that maybe a short memo is more than you need and that might be a good idea. So they're trying to suggest a simpler option. A23 is the same as A19, though it gives you the option of a checklist. It says maybe you could use a checklist, maybe you could use a memo. Um, but it doesn't say you have to write a memo. It doesn't say you must or shall write a memo. Now the other areas that it's mentioned are in complex issues. Um, if you have problems with the legal letter, if you have group audit issues, if there are restrictions on a group auditor in a component, if there are key audit matters being mentioned, well, of course you should write a memo. You've got issues, you've got problems, you need to document it, you need to say what's going on, and you need to write down your conclusions on how they affect the audit opinion, if they do. But it never says shall. It says may be needed. So what then do standards say about checklist? And they are mentioned in five sections, and they are mentioned nine times. So what's the first time? Um, Statement of Quality Management 1, paragraph 57. And I say 1.1. This is the first section it's mentioned in, and the first time it's mentioned in that section. I would call it 1.2 if there was a second time, but there isn't. Paragraph 57 requires documentation of the quality management system, and A203 says documentation may take the form of manuals, checklists, and forms, and then it goes on to say it may be informally or formally documented, um, factors that affect the firm's judgment about the form, of, uh, form content, and extent of documentation, and they list five. So what that says is both checklists and forms are okay for documenting the quality management system. Audit objectives, first time mentioned. Audit documentation provides evidence of the auditor's basis for the conclusion about the achievement of the overall objectives. While it is unnecessary for the auditor to document separately, as in a checklist, for example, that individual objectives have been achieved, and then it goes on to say about what happens if they haven't been achieved, but what does that say? It says two things. It says, first of all, checklists are okay documentation. And the second thing it says is it's unnecessary to document separately things. Some things document another thing. So you don't have to document every last thing in a file. Some things are implicit in others. 220, quality management for an audit. Third section, first time. <clears throat> 
the engagement partner is required to determine if there are sufficient resources to do the audit. When we move into the appendix, it talks about intellectual resources as being a subset of firm resources, and they include, for example, methodologies, tools, auditing guides, model programs, templates, templates, checklists, or forms. So again, checklists are okay. You can use checklists. Quality management for an audit documentation, a second time it's mentioned. A117. In accordance with 230, audit documentation provides evidence that the audit complies with standards. However, it is neither necessary for practicable for the auditor to document every matter considered or professional judgment made in an audit. Further, it is unnecessary for the auditor to document separately, as in a checklist, for example, compliance with matters for which compliance is demonstrated by other documents in the file. So that says several things. First of all, it says you don't have to document everything. And then it says there are some things that don't require separate documentation because they are implicit in other pieces of documentation. And then it says that checklists are okay. And that's now the second time they've mentioned that. Audit documentation. Uh, fourth section, first time. Overall requirement to document is in that section. There is an overall requirement to do that. And then A3 gives us examples of audit documentation, says they include, they list seven things, and number six is checklists. So checklists are okay audit documentation. 230A7, also on audit documentation, second time it's mentioned. This may be my favorite paragraph in the whole handbook. Starts out by saying that documentation provides evidence that you've complied with standards, of course. And then we've heard this before. However, it is neither necessary nor practicable for the auditor to document every matter considered or professional judgment made in an audit. Further, it is unnecessary for the auditor to document separately, as in a checklist, for example, compliance with matters for which compliance is demonstrated by documents included within the audit file. Then it gives some examples. So what does that say? Again, it says we don't have to document everything. The handbook says you got to do something. This says you don't have to document every single thing. And it says that some things don't require separate documentation because they're already implicit in other pieces of documentation. And it says that checklists are okay. And it's now the third time that it's said. Now, 230.17, assembling of the file, third time it's mentioned in this section. A22 says, changes to the file after assembly are okay if they are, and there are four examples. Now, there's a requirement to complete the audit file in a certain time frame, but this says that it's okay for some things to be done after the time frame is up, and the third thing they mention of four examples is signing off on completion checklists relating to the file assembly process. So you've assembled the file, but you haven't got around to filling out the checklist now, and they say that's okay. But the other thing that means is that means that having a completion checklist to make sure that you properly assemble the file is okay. So checklists are okay. Small Audit, Section 300 on Documentation, uh, mentioned two times. I guess the most important paragraph, it just says, uh, A A13 says, Small audits can have simple documentation. And then 20 and 23 both say, maybe you can use a checklist in a small audit. You could have a standard audit program or a completion checklist or checklist in 23. So. Those are two examples where it's saying, hey, perhaps in a small audit, a checklist is a really good idea to help you do the audit simply and efficiently because small audits can have simple documentation. So that's in the context of, hey, helpful hint, use a checklist. So there are the various sections, one to nine. Um, 
where standards say, hey, use a checklist. Now, of course, it never says you can use a checklist for everything, so we have to interpret this carefully, that there are going to be circumstances where checklists are really helpful, and in those circumstances we should use them. And also, if we remember what they said about memorandum, sometimes you're going to have to write a memo. Sometimes, no matter how good your checklist is, you're going to have to write a memo. That's fine. Now, what has to be documented? And there are two categories in standards. There are a lot of times in standards it says the auditor or the engagement partner shall. But it doesn't necessarily say shall document. So we can think carefully about whether or not we have to document all those shalls. Whereas, it, and often when we get to the end of this uh, a section, it says the auditor shall document. One, two, three, four, five. And often those are the kinds of things that might go beyond what a checklist could help us with. Maybe it's something that the checklist can prompt us to remember. Have we documented someplace else in the file this thing that we must document? Um, and also remember it does say three times that we don't have to document everything. So number one, we don't have to. We may want to prompt. If it's a shall consider, kind of like to have a checklist that says, did you consider this? Yes, I did. Initial state. That's sufficient documentation. It never says the, doc the auditor shall document the consideration somehow. It just says the auditor shall. The second one, shall document, those things absolutely have to be documented and probably, as I said, are going to be beyond what you might be able to use a checklist for. And all the checklist might be able to do is prompt you, make sure we documented this. Now, 230A7, my favorite paragraph, gives some examples of where one thing documents another. And this is for example, so there may well be other things like this. But it, for instance, says the audit plan documents that you did planning. So if there are a bunch of sections where it says you shall do this and that and the other, in planning and you have an audit plan, 230A7 says, hey, you're done. Um, an engagement letter proves you agreed the terms with the client. So you don't have to write a memo that says, today I went and talked to the client and I discussed the terms of the engagement and blah, 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 I agreed the terms. If you have a signed engagement letter, it documents that you did all that. If you have an audit qualification, that may well prove that you followed all the requirements for a qualification. Skepticism is proved by some place or other in the audit. We did a few more tests. We followed something up. We were obviously skeptical. Um, partner involvement in planning is proved by involvement in team discussions. Some place or other we document a team discussion that the partner was involved in, the partners involved in planning. So in summary, checklists are OK. It says that nine times. We have to remember we don't have to document everything. That's three times. Some things don't require separate documentation, and we are given four or five examples, and I'm sure there are more. And we should remember that small audits can have simple documentation, and indeed they suggest using a checklist in a small audit to keep it simple. So if someone says to you, wouldn't you agree with me that checklists are insufficient documentation you say, they're fine documentation, go read the standards. So, thanks for listening.